Well, good morning. I was making Judy do some overtime today. I was a little late getting up here, but uh, so glad to have uh, so many of you here today. Uh, service for Eaton Community Church, Hi at Home. We're live streaming. We are good to go, so if you weren't here, um, thankful today to wake up to see some moisture coming around. So, wonderful day. So glad to have everyone here on this kind of cool fall morning. Uh, a couple announcements. Um, there is a nominating committee meeting after service today. So if you're part of that committee, make sure you join that. Also, um, they have been accepting um, nominations for the committee for deacons and elders positions. So if you have a recommendation, you're certainly welcome to give that to uh, the office here. A uh, couple other things. Um, pray for the youth. You know, this is a tough and trying time for the youth at this time, but we've had so many coming this year to the youth group, and it's really been an awesome blessing that we're so excited about. Um, pray for the people that are helping, try to develop those relationships with the youth to get them connected. Um, pray that we're, we're getting the gospel in an understanding way that they'll hear and, and, and get and let it sink into them. But yesterday we had a wonderful day. We were able to go serve four widows yesterday in our community here of the church. I'm just doing some simple household things, but uh, what a blessing to see these kids and how eager and how well they served um, those in our congregation. It was just a real blessing for me to get to see. So um, I know you guys don't get to always see those things. I'll try to get some pictures on the Facebook page. But uh, wonderful, and just be praying for, for them in their hearts right now. Um, that's all the announcements I have for this morning, and I'm going to invite uh, Patty up at this time to talk about OCC, and she'll explain what that is if you don't know. Good morning. Um, it's a time of year when we get to talk about Operation Christmas Child again. I know you're very used to seeing Dee Simpson up here telling you in her own very enthusiastic way how excited we are to partner with Samaritan's Purse on this project. But as most of you know, Dee's been pretty busy getting Jerry back on his feet, and we are so glad to see him back in the service. <laughs> We assured her that Operation Christmas Child would go forward as usual. The folks at Samaritan's Purse tell us that due to the COVID-19 pandemic, they would like to collect even more boxes this year than ever because they anticipate that there will be even greater opportunities to reach children with the hope of the gospel. They and we want every child to know that God loves them and has not forgotten them, especially in this time of fear and uncertainty. So we urge you to pick up a box, two if you can, and lovingly pack them with things that children need and love. Um, as in the past, please, if there's anyone who can't get out to shop, just let us know and we'll be happy to do it for you. Thank you, and Dwayne's gonna show us a video, or John is right now. I'm reminded by so many things in those videos. One, did you guys see that swing? Hasn't that been cool to go? <laughs> one thing I noticed. But anyway, one of the, one of the one was uh, you said the church all kind of handing the boxes out in like a big human chain. of box. We've done that almost every year, and that's just one of my favorite times of the year to do. And uh, we do so many boxes here every year. Um, you know, Dee and Chris for so many years leading that up. Um, wonderful time of year. I, I did read this week that Samaritan Purse is anticipating one of the biggest needs um, ever this year. So consider doing the boxes. I think there's boxes out front that you'll be handing out today after service. Pick up a box if you feel led. I know um, in the past you can pay a little extra postage, I think, to be able to follow where that box goes, which is kind of cool to do, um, to see, see where it happens. And then um, very much committed to spreading the gospel to these nations. So preferably consider those things. But at this time, I'm going to have you stand with me as we do this month's memory verse. We're going to be following after me. 2 Timothy 
All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness. 2 Timothy 3.16. Excellent. One more time with me. 2 Timothy 3.16. All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness. 2 Timothy 3.16. Wonderful one to commit to memory, is it not? Well, we're going to be staying in 2 Timothy today in our reading of God's holy word. We'll be in 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 9. The scripture is kind of right before these. Godliness, godlessness in the last days. But understand this, that in the last days there will come times of difficulty. For people will be lovers of self, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, heartless, unappeasable, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not loving good, treacherous, reckless, swollen with conceit, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having the appearance of godliness, but denying its power. Avoid such people. For among them are those who creep into households and capture weak women, burdened with sins and led astray by various passions, always learning and never able to arrive at a knowledge of the truth. Just as Janus and Jambre opposed Moses, so these men also opposed the truth. Men corrupted in mind and disqualified regarding the faith, but they will not get very far for their folly will be plain to all, as was that of those two men. This is the reading of God's holy word and instruction to us. Let's bow our heads in prayer for today's service. Father, we are thankful that you are a gracious Father. Father, it's a pretty sound description of the world around us today, certainly sounding like us in our times. Father, all too often, this is a stark description of us. Help us to not just have the appearance of godliness, but to have and live for the knowledge of your truth. Father, help us rejoice that you are a wonderful and loving Savior. Father, we pray today that... uh, So much going on, so much strife in this nation. Father, we pray for unity in this time. Father, we pray for our brothers and sisters in this country who may not be able to meet. Father, the closing in of winter, um, they may have been meeting outside, and now that's looking like something that will be more difficult. So, Father, we pray for those brothers and sisters at this time. We pray for this time in our country. We pray for revival in this country. Father, it's an anxious time. It can be fearful and uncertain. But we pray that we be filled with courage and strength in your spirit. Father, we pray that we can be the light to our friends and neighbors in these uncertain times. So we ask that the Holy Spirit be with us today. It would cause our hearts and our souls and our minds to be focused on you, to exalt your holy name and our singing and the listening to the word in our service here today. And we ask these things and these blessings through your son's holy name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Remain standing as we sing praises to the Lord. Remain standing as we read from God's word this morning from 1 Timothy chapter 4. If you put these things before the brothers... You will be a good servant of Christ Jesus, being trained in the words of the faith and of the good doctrine that you have followed. Have nothing to do with irreverent, silly myths. Rather, train yourself with godliness. 
Um, and while you're doing that, we're going to dismiss the kids. <laughs> um, Give me about five weeks and I'll have this down. About the time summer comes when we're not doing it anymore. So kids, if you're first grade under, wanna go with uh, Carla, she's back there just waiting for you. Thank you for the reminders. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for your message to us. We pray today that you will seal it to our hearts. There are many, many, many things going on in our world that are troubling, that are liable to cause anxiety, cause us, Lord, to wonder who really is in charge. Uh, these are things that are in our world at large, and then there are things in our lives individually that have the same impact on us because they're just not going our way. We don't know what to do. Father, we have sung this morning so clearly, and I pray that somehow the message will resonate with us. We need to look to you. We need to trust in you. We need to allow you time to do your work. Having said that, it is our responsibility to pray for those things which are important, which are critical. You not only have determined the end result, but Lord, you've determined the means by which we get there, and our prayers are part of that. And as we see a world that is burning down around us, a world which is suffering um, and with increased violence again from this virus, we bring these things before you, Father. We ask for relief. At the same time, we acknowledge they have not happened without your concurrence. And there is a purpose behind them. There is a reason for them. And we pray that those purposes might be accomplished, perhaps quickly, so that you could make sure they are done away. But Father, we thank you that you are in charge. We thank you that there is reason for hope because of who you are. As we bring our individual issues to you this morning, we pray for resolution there. But most of all, we pray that Lord, you will help us never to stop short of you, that we will not just look for your blessings, but that we will be looking for you and finding you that we will find we have the solution to every problem that we have, that you are sufficient. We pray for the election coming up. Never in our time has there been such a such a clear um, watershed time, especially when it comes to religious liberty, when it comes to the dignity of life, when it comes to the sanctity of marriage, when it comes to the hubris of mankind who would even say, I can determine my own sexuality when you have clearly given to each one of us a gift that should never be taken for granted and